Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 11 of our FTV Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today guys, I want to go ahead and get end of our latex production all set up. So I let it build up just a bit of plastic, not too much. However, we did need some plastic to go ahead and get started with our latex production. So, it's going to bring this upstairs for now. I've done a bit of work here, which we'll get into in just a second. However, that should be enough. Okay, and that's our block laser done. Perfect. Okay, so that was facing upwards and it is automatically pulling from the acacia log below however like i said we do need power on it very simply done we just powered it with two uh, flux ducts i removed the connection from underneath this fluid extractor here just because we don't have the power at the moment to make these powered however it should be good to go now now coming back over here the thing i did want to start today was getting all of this here automated oh i did not lock this drawer one second these shouldn't be producing no they're not okay but see that's the issue right here this sugarcane drawer is filled with 2000 sugar now that's not normally a problem i would just stick upgrades in it however i'd have to go and smelt all this copper to upgrade it so why not have that done automatically the way i'm going to do that is with what's in this chest over here which is a bit of smart shoots a bucket of lava a fan and some contraptions to connect it all together really it's very simple however i do want to go ahead and lock these drawers so i don't have excess going in and all of these should be locked as well as this is just future proofing the system as i believe i've counted 39 different items that will drop out of our sifters once we have the highest tier sifter and all of the like resources to sift so that means there, i believe there's soul sand and stone netherrack as well on top of the dust sand and gravel so we'll have all those set up eventually and all of them will be set up with pedestals in the future and we'll get rid of the cobble generators and auto hammers as they just don't keep up simply however for now what we have is perfectly fine and there's no need to rush for completion as the pedestals require upgrades and the upgrades require a lot of diamonds and emeralds which we do not have. So without further ado, I really want to go ahead and set up this very simple auto smelter with fans. So that'll be our first chute. We'll have a space in the middle and then we'll have our chute below it. And in this space here, I need to have a trap door like this, this. I need a block of lava right here and I need my fan right there. So I'm going to pick this up actually, not the best idea. And I'll place my fan down like so. And that's the contraption done. Very simple. Well, not not quite. I do have to put the shoots in and I also have to filter them. And I need this controller extension down here, which will link directly to it. So this is already set up. We'll set this to single mode and there we go. So now it's set up. And so shoot here, shoot there. And we'll set up two filters for the shoots in just a second. Actually, I'll do that right now. Why not? So the top filter up here, I want to only accept raw ore. So if I grab a piece of raw ore and stick it in as this reference item, can be smelted is nice. However, what's wrong with can be smelted is a lot of things here can be smelted that aren't just the ores so it can be smelted in the blast furnace pretty nice however there's one thing that's other than the ores that can be smelted and that's certus quartz dust which will turn into silicon so what we have to do is tagged raw forge materials so for so is tagged hashtag forge raw materials that is the tag we want and we'll select enter on that one and then this guy we want the reference item to be a raw ingot so if we go like this and we look for is tagged forge ingots and hit check mark then what these shoots will do is they will only grab and accept new ingot items so if i put this shoot here i'm not going to put the other shoot in just yet this is the ingot run rate oh did we not save it there we go i forgot to click the plus on the two of them so yeah just go again down to forge ingots add attribute to list i forgot that part and then and click check so is tagged forge ingots we'll stick you there and i do want uh, you know what nether bricks kind of fine it's kind of like a forge down here so we'll we'll keep the nether bricks for now however i do want to be have like i want to have an open area to this just so i can make sure it's working but we'll cover that up in just a second here and i'm not going to set this up as my rotational force for my fan isn't set up however once i have that which should be very simple actually. It is slightly off-centered to what I have at the moment, but I should be able to just take the power out of here and run it vertically. I don't have any gearboxes on me, however, so it won't be as easy as I thought. Okay, now that was super simple. I added a gearbox, a vertical gearbox to pull the power down, a other gearbox to pull it sideways, and now we should be good 
to change this. Hey, at least our fans blade the right direction. That is one thing I did have to check, but probably shouldn't have done it with the lava in there because it would burn us. However, now that I know my fans blade in the right direction, I'm going to take my lava out temporarily. And also I do need a block here. I just realized because otherwise the ingots will push over to the edge. So I can observe it from this side, I guess. But nevertheless, I need to grab my filter out and do it very fast because there might be some items in here that aren't ores. Perfect. Now the rest are ores. Oh, that was a lot of things that came out of that. So we'll just go ahead and stick them all back in and we'll stick our lava bucket down and we should see these guys start to collect ores. So if we just monitor our ingots for a second here, it's 127 in the middle, 215 down here, 52 here, 8, 1, and 35. This should go up any second now. The white is kind of hard to see on the white background. I might I might have chosen a better choice for the colors. However, yep, that one of 25. This is going up to 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. Look at that. All instantly. Like it instantly went up and all of our ores are smelted look at that all done that was like what 3,000 raw ores all smelted up within what less than 10 seconds and that thing is completely empty so that is a very very simple automation for ores now small caveat to this guy the storage controller is the only thing that will accept a smart shoot so if you select a smart shoot on say one of these controller extensions down here even if it's linked to your storage system it will not work now later in the future this can be solved with applied energistics you can have all of the ores be exported to a chest and have multiple different smart shoots and that is something we will do most likely as well one smart shoot won't be able to keep up with really really fast ore production however at the moment this guy isn't too fast he only spins at i think 20 48 yeah he only spins at 2048 it is not the fastest in the world so we're not going to have to worry too much about that however now that my copper is all smelted up and my gold is all smelted up i want to go ahead and add copper and gold upgrades to all of these so we don't ever run out of space before i do that actually what i want to check is if my dominion wand i do need a bookworm out and thank you to i oh i can't remember your name there's someone in my comments who told me i can remove my bookworms and only have them i only need them here when i want to connect a new inventory so i do need a third bookworm actually no i didn't i need all of them down just because i ran out of space however i should only need my bookworms down when i'm adding inventories so if i right click like this inventory added so i should be able to access all my ingots from over here right yeah all my ingots are access accessible perfect that is in range however i don't want them to be traveling all over the place so we're going to go ahead and remove these little fellas <laughs> humanely obviously this is very humane now that they're added back to our storage system we have everything we need at our fingertips even though it's just over here because once again that is in the 32 block radius wasn't planned however luckily it is within 32 blocks so that does reach and well we have all of these on demand in our system so we can craft with them whenever we'd like i've gone ahead and added gold upgrades one gold upgrade should i say to each one of these up here i didn't touch any of the ore chests for now as this should never backlog with ores right this should only ever backlog with ingots if it ever does so i'm not too worried about upgrading the ore drawers at the moment as we are out of copper pretty much i only have 230 left and well it requires two blocks of uh, copper and three ingots per upgrade so we used up pretty much all of our copper resources and a lot of our gold so i do need to actually turn this thing back on so that we can generate some more resources and let this thing go and it should be pretty decent however i do want to upgrade these hoppers here with speed upgrades like i said earlier because while this speed isn't great for our system also another thing i've done is i've added i've re-added here i'll show chat I re-added every inventory in the game back in order, starting with our drawers over there. And that is so, when I throw things like that in there, they automatically fill into our drawers first, and the rest of these are locked, so nothing will ever fill them. But yeah, I want to use these drawers as my main storage for all my ingots, dusts, and so on and so forth, so all this stuff here. And I don't want it to just fill up my system with clog, so... I went ahead and added that as the first one because if you remember bookworms will prioritize the first inventory they added to so that is the first inventory added therefore anything that can fit in that inventory will go into that inventory now to actually get speed upgrades it's i don't believe in our wheelhouse just yet but it might be so these pneumatic craft speed upgrades right here they are silicon glycerol 
Upgrade matrix and invar gear. Actually, we can't do this right away. This isn't too bad at all. So the upgrade matrix is just lapis with water inside of a thermonomatic press. And temperature is fine, so it just needs two bars of pressure. We can do that very easily. Invar gears, well, we made invar last episode. It is just nickel and iron in the uh, alloy kiln. Silicon is smelted surface quartz dust, like I was saying earlier, because we didn't want that to go down into our machine. So I'm going ahead and smelt up two stacks of surface quartz dust. And we'll use our pressure that we're getting from up here because we're not doing anything with it, really. So I'll just stick that guy right there. He has plenty enough pressure immediately. I'll stick a water tank. I did not want to waterlog him, I'm going to be honest. I didn't realize you could waterlog these guys. What I want to do, buck them out off, do it on top, then shift right click with our configurator, and then the water will automatically go in. We'll stick our lapis in there, and we'll get ourselves upgrade matrixes. And I believe it's four per, yeah. Nice, all of our speed upgrades are now in our hoppers. So these should keep up. If I turn these guys on, the gravel, oh, it's overstressed, whoops. I forgot, I have to take this guy off because we don't have enough diesel engines. So that is something I'll probably make a bunch of off screen just because we do have the diesel production and we've seen those be made. However, these guys should keep up now. This one might need another speed upgrade actually. Dust, the gravel surprisingly keeping up. I'm not sure why dust isn't. It's struggling a bit. Here, we'll just empty it ourselves. This guy's keeping up. And Gravel is surprisingly keeping up really well. Does this guy have a pusher upgrade? Oh, he doesn't. Oh, he didn't have a pusher upgrade. Oh, it's because that one has two. How did I manage? Okay, you're not keeping up either. I'll stick the other speed upgrade in him. Because sand, we don't have many items coming out of it. However, these guys do have a lot of items. So we'll stick the speed upgrades in them. And three seems to be fine. I think I'll need one more in this guy. And yeah, this preceptor shouldn't need any more. But yeah, I'll definitely need one more speed upgrading him. So we'll sacrifice our sand because those are our most important resources. And this should never overclog. Yeah, it's almost instant now. So four speed upgrades seems to be the ace for 2048 SU. And yeah, this one's going to overfill slightly eventually. However, it's not the biggest of deals. We don't need to really worry about those five resources that much. And our dust is fine with three as well. So four for the gravel, two eventually for sand, and three for dust. Seems to keep up pretty well. And these should all fill up eventually with plenty of ingots and resources. So all of our resources are automatically taken care of now. We never have to concern ourselves with them. Well, those resources that is. Now there's a few things that we could start in our quest book today. And a lot of this stuff down here is pneumatic craft based. And we did a lot of pneumatic craft last episode. So it is not something I really want to get into two episodes in a row. However, we will be tackling this entire progression line next episode as it, it looks complicated, but in reality, it's just a few machines that produce a lot of resources per thing. Now up here, this will be our space program in this corner over here. But right in the middle here, we have a little little thing that's not very important outside of the LDPE sheet. However, we do want to get to force infused biodiesel and make our fuel source better in the future. But for now, we don't really have the power to produce a system like this. So what I want to go ahead and do is get into invar production, sorry, electrum production, as Electrum is, if I can look at it, the usage for our next set of magnets. So these guys right here, actually two sets of magnets away. We're quite far away. However, these will be used in magnet production later down the line. And these magnets can be upgraded with a volatile redstone. So we'll get to this eventually. However, I do want to set up an induction smelter right away as the induction smelter can be used for a lot of different things and will make our processes much easier than having to use the alloy kilns. So we'll go ahead and make one of these. Now it requires a lot of things we don't currently have. However, one thing we do luckily have are blast bricks. Or I forgot to record blast bricks in the episode the one time. I did make four more as a punishment. However, due to me making four more, I have reinforced blast bricks on hand. Now, what I also want to grab and do is I want to go and replace our current blast brick setup with steel bricks as well. So we'll take all this out, smash that apart, and what we'll do is we'll go up one by one. It's the exact same build, by the way. Very simple. However, there is one change, and that one change is simply a hopper on top, and all you have to do is right-click the middle, and you will get the advanced blast furnace. Now this guy is much faster and you can speed it up with electricity later in the future. However, that is not something we had the privilege of having excess of at the moment. So I'm just gonna grab myself a stack of our 5.5 thousand iron ingots, by the way. This guy's already at 3.1 thousand and he was empty when we just started that setup. And that was maybe like 10 minutes ago. So as you see, this, this guy right here produces 
resource is very, very fast, like extremely fast. And it smelts up instantly as well. So I highly recommend if you're at the same stage of the game I am, you set up very something very similar to this. It is very cheap. Once again, you can do these with pedestals instead of the netherite auto hammers. However, the speed upgrades for the pedestals are expensive, like I said. So it is something we will change in the future. However, at our current cost, we don't really have the ability to upgrade the pedestals. Now for this blast furnace over here, it should be a much faster blast furnace process than we currently do have. And I do need to bring this forward one eventually. I'll do that later because I do need an output chest for our slag. And then on the sides here, like I said, we can put preheaters, which will require power. However, they're not something in our budget at the moment as we don't have the power generation to do so but that'll be something in the future this guy up here is producing 490 uh fe per tick which isn't great however it isn't using all 490 but if i did hook up our latex processing down here like if i hooked up all of the fluid extractors to it i would quickly run out of power however these guys are still making three millibuckets per tick it's not the fastest but we're well, not three millibuckets per tick sorry but three millibuckets at a decent rate we do have Plenty of mendocine, mushrooms, and tomatoes should be backlogged over here. Yeah, we have tomato seeds backlogged over here. And we have ethanol and vegetable oil permanently full. All of these guys are full as well. So I will upgrade the tanks eventually just so we can have more backlogged as we will have more diesel engines. But the fluid drawer up here should be full of biodiesel. Yeah, 88.5 buckets. And last time this was at 60. So these guys are running and we're never running out of biodiesel. So I can definitely afford maybe two more engines without having to worry. So we're definitely going to set up some more engines and <laughs> I'm going to set up a flight eventually. But we do need diamonds for that and we just don't have the diamonds to do so at the moment. We we'll, Well, we do actually have 33. I really should do it. But we'll, we'll put it off a bit longer because I think it's funny. So I've gone ahead and smelted up a bunch of Invar gears in our alloy kilns over there. It's just nickel, iron, and coal. And the reason I'm doing this is both for the induction smelter, we need Invar gears, but also our speed upgrades require Invar gears. So the fact that I can just make so much Invar, as, well, as much Invar as I want, without having to worry about resources anymore, I can just go ahead and make, well, it all right here. And that should be enough. I don't think I'll need more than, and we'll make it even number. Why not? Now, the only other two things we need for the induction smelter are some vacuum tubes, which we made before, and that is just nickel, redstone, copper wire, and any piece of glass in the engineer's workbench. So that's easy. But the only other thing we do need is this advanced component here. As you see, it's the only item missing. This guy isn't too hard to make in reality. It is just a diamond or a precision mechanism. We'll use a diamond for now because I don't believe I have any more from the wandering traders. I have two, but those are pretty useful. Diamonds we will have infinite of soon. I'll, I mean, to be fair, we can make infinite of these as well. We do have this set up for it. However, for now, we'll just use two diamonds. Not a big deal. Okay, so the first thing is just heating up our blaze burner here, and we should get ourselves some redstone pearls. Perfect. And the recipe sequence was sheet pearl press so we'll go ahead and stick the sheets on you we'll grab our redstone pearls there we'll stick our diamonds in here and perfect those guys should fill out just fine and they should be stuck in here right or stuck in this one where did they go okay they must have gone somewhere oh they flamed off the end there i want I, th I wonder if it's because this belt right here that they didn't want to go in this chest oh no this chest is just set to the wrong direction i just realized there we go it's because our rotation did change. I'm not entirely sure why. However, it is clear to me that these did change. I have it on me. Why do I keep looking? But yeah, our tire rotation changed. If you saw, our belts are going the wrong direction now or the, a different direction than they used to. And we can go ahead and craft ourselves our first induction smelter. Perfect. And that is a lot of quests done as well. Once again, I think I should actually just go ahead and claim all these quests before someone in the comments tells me, hey, you're not claiming your quests <laughs> just because... I keep forgetting, right? And they're like, I don't think the rewards from the quests are too good. Like, they're not something that is required to progress. I think there are a few, like the Silk Touch Shovel is very important for mycelium. And I think there's a few other ones that are, might be important. But in general case, I don't think anything here. A Crescent Hammer is not bad, I will admit. I did have to make one of those myself. So I could have skipped that. An elven mana spreader. Okay, that must be in a new update because that didn't exist before. Signalum is actually pretty nice. Pristine diamond. Oh, that's some geodes. Wait, why did those get just pushed away just now? That wasn't from the bee. That was from my items. I think my the loot bee ran over it 
and just decided that it felt like pushing items out. <laughs> okay, I caught the gold chest somehow, and that bee is now just wandering. I do have enough bees, and that is actually something I want to set up probably. I keep saying something I want to set up next episode, but I do need to set up bee production, simple bee production that is, and that is so we can get honey and honeycomb set up. Just looking over the quest book here, something that we do need, like I said, for the force gem saplings in all of this production down here, is we'll need the liquid crystallizer eventually. However, to get that, we'll need force saplings and a pyrolyzer. Not too big of a concern. The concern here is the LDPE sheets, which is clearly used to make both simple machine frames, dissolution chambers, as well as the liquid crystallizer. So how do you make those? Well, it's just polyethylene shoved on top of latex rubber sheets. Now it's polyethylene. Well, polyethylene is simply latex and liquid ethylene. Now liquid ethylene, and this is where it gets fun, is liquid ethylene is sulfur infused ethanol, which is very simple actually in the end. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we want to set up auto polyethylene as this will be used in a lot of resources. So you'll need it for printed silicon later in the future. You will also need it for the protective fabric and the LDPE sheets, as well as space plating blocks. So these are a lot of things we're going to need here in chapter one. And I believe these are for chapter two or chapter three potentially, or sorry, these are things we'll need for chapter two and this is in chapter three. So yeah, we're not gonna worry too much about the polyethylene for this guy as this requires chlorine, which is is brine and we don't have access to making brine because it requires a thermal evaporation block and these guys require compressed iron dialectic paste and, and dialectic paste is kerosene which is oil refinery oh i love it i love this pack so much there's so many byproducts and resources that you get from other resources that you have to combine into large systems it is one of my favorite things about greg tech in general and in expert packs is requiring every mod but also fluid byproducts and item byproducts are so, it's just so much fun because you can make these giant systems that are self-sustaining with every byproduct going in every different direction. So if that does seem too complicated for you, I'm sorry because that is the process I am going with for this series. We're going to have every byproduct on automation with systems here, systems there, all automated so that everything is passively generated so we never have to worry about any fluid in the game from start to finish. So obviously right now we don't have the means to do so because we will need ender tanks and entangled blocks and other things and much more power for sure, much, much more power to make something like this in the future. However, at this current moment in time, we're going to go ahead and set up polyethylene, not get too complicated. I've gone ahead and made two more pneumatic craft machines. Now I said I didn't want to do much more pneumatic craft this episode as obviously we just did all of it last episode. However, you do need a lot of pneumatic craft to progress in this pack. Also, I forgot I do have these creeper slippers on, but they don't seem to work for the small creepers. But I really do need to light this area up because, well, right now it's quite quite brutal that we keep having come down here with mob spawned. So I've actually gone ahead and used these sparks from Cyclic. They're pretty easy to craft. It's just glowstone, a candle, and a torch. However, you do get a bunch of them from a quest reward. I don't I don't recall what quest what quest it is exactly. However, we do have them. But what I want to go ahead and do is I need ethanol for this production as well as latex. So I should be able to stick a thermonomatic processing plant here. We'll have ethanol be pushed into it. I need a pulverizer on top for fluid. And I'll need a fluid mixer here to mix ethanol with, what was it? Latex. So latex will come in from that side. We'll have our fluid processing plant right there. And pulverizer will pull in sulfur from the side like this. We'll have auto input on him. He'll pull in from the side and push it on the bottom. So we don't need any drawers in between here. So this will we'll just stick sulfur in here. It'll get pulverized, pushed into this one. We'll put a fluid drawer in the middle here that is pulling from north, I believe. Yeah, it pulls from north, pushes south, and that'll put that in there. And then we'll just hook up some more basic mechanical pipes to put into this fluid mixture temporarily. But like I said, later down the line with ender tanks and entangled blocks, we'll be able to make this a lot more compact. Also, this setup, I assume, in, I assume will change a lot because we will keep it at this level, most likely, for our passive wall of fun. However, we'll, we'll change it a lot in the future. But for now, this is this is a pretty good setup. Now, this may seem like an obvious fix for getting fluids out of the bucket. However, I'm so used to right-clicking out of drawers and tanks to receive a fluid. But as this is functional storage, you left-click to receive items. So it only makes sense to left-click to receive fluids. 
and thanks to Stolzy, I had to look this comment up because all he said was, have you tried clicking the drawer with left click? And no, I've never tried that. However, that is how you get fluids out of drawers and it is very simple. So this guy will pull from the north. I accidentally had him pulling down. So that's why I had some ethanol in that tank. However, it's simply fixed by left clicking to get the bucket out. Very, very simple fix. So this guy will receive from the top, push out. And then I also want him to push south. I'll set it before I put it in. So he'll push south. We already have our latex pumping in. I've just disabled the latex processing unit from absorbing power for the minute or for the time being. As plastic production isn't our top priority, it is the ethylene, or sorry, the polyethylene. Now this guy is once again going to pull from the north, so I'll set this before I stick it in, just so we don't pull in anything unwanted. And this should be good to make polyethylene. So I'll grab some sulfur, I need to hook this guy up to power, and we should be good. Okay, I'm grabbing my sulfur and spider man just joined my game so that's kind of fun but yeah so we're just gonna grab our sulfur as we have plenty from our automatic farm oh we don't want to stick that in there i want to stick only sulfur in there it will automatically be pulled in like i said and i will stick an lv connector on top this height should not interfere with anything it will start to fill up with power it will start to pulverize and it should automatically go in here and make us polyethylene. Oh, we do need pressure for this guy, actually. I did forget. Oh, and I do need a puller pusher upgrade to going upwards in this guy as well. So push up. There we go. And then we do need pressure. I did forget. Do I have room to do pressure? I do have room to do pressure. Nice. I don't believe the mixer needs pressure. Oh, it needs two bars. Okay. Well, we'll have to run new cables for this back here just to accommodate because yeah we don't want this going in here anyways hmm i guess i can run it around the back not ideal but i will run this around the back and i will run pressure up to both of those machines as well okay simply put i ran pressure into the back of these they're slowly going to fill up this guy requires four bars of pressure it should be making four bars oh it's currently at three but this will fill up it'll take some time as we don't have the most rotational force possible however these are slowly filling up with pressure this guy has plenty which will allow it time to fill up with latex actually and this should be set to pull already awesome so in a bit of time once this catches up with pressure we will start to make polyethylene and like I said, with the polyethylene, we will, well, we'll need it for a lot of things in the future. This requires for our spacesuit. This is for some machines in the future, like the dissolution chamber, like I said, the fabrication matrix, which will be used a lot, as well as the silicon, which was required for uh, applied logistics, obviously. So polyethylene is a big thing you want to get automated very fast. And now I'm not saying this is the best possible setup. Obviously, powered fluid extractors are better. And for biodiesel production and ethanol production in general, you would want more of each one. However, at our current capacity for resources, this is probably the most compact setup you can get that recursively crafts passively all of these resources. Now, obviously, I have to fill the sulfur manually, and I do have to fill our acacia logs manually. However, those are things we can fix in the future with ender tanks, ender chests, or quantum entangled, uh, entangled blocks, sorry, or even quantum entangled portals from mechanism. However, that's excess overkill. But like I said, we're going to have a passive system for every fluid and every item that requires late game crafting set up down here. And this is just the start. So we do have have our production for biodiesel along the bottom and now we have the production for polyethylene up top like this now obviously we're going to need ethanol for i think one or two more things so we're going to have to enter tank this around our base but for now this looks pretty good i don't want to pat myself on the back but i'm gonna pat myself on the back because it's pretty compact other than this pipe here for the latex obviously okay see now i'm contemplating because we actually can go ahead and make ourselves silver i believe because the silver requires mana powder and mana powder is just glowstone inside of that and to get silver we also only need quicksilver which is thermonomatic mineral mineral is squeezer and mineral log is sapling sapling is oak hmm Okay, I think I'm going to detour. So I've gone ahead and just set back up our armor stands with two observers on the bottom. And these guys will just squeeze our mineral and fill up this mineral tank in the back. And this will be used to... I didn't actually pin any of the recipes yet. I forgot. However, 
This will be used in our pro another thermotomotic processing plant to make ourselves in Quicksilver. And the Quicksilver will be used inside of our supercooler with mana powder to make silver. Now, this is one method to make silver. However, another way to make silver is if we look up silver dust, you can actually get silver as a byproduct of pulverizing lead. Now, you can go ahead and do this. I'm not because obviously this isn't the way the pack devs intended to get the silver prior to having uh, dash infused meshes, obviously. And we will have dash infused meshes in no time once we get to space. So I'm not going to go ahead and do this for now. However, this is an easy way to get silver dust. And by easy, I mean quite painful as it's only 5% and you can boost them with auxiliary sieves sieves from thermal expansion however we're just we're not going to go ahead and do that just quite yet so silver is going to just be made from mineral resin and a bit of mana powder for now so i'm going to go ahead and use this thermal pneumatic processing plant that we used to make all of our upgrade matrixes earlier and we're going to use this to make our silver quicksilver that is and that's because i don't really need to make any more upgrade matrixes and those things aren't expensive now that we have infinite resources but just to save on some time in this episode i'm going to go ahead and grab our mineral tank i will do the exact same thing and stick it on top and we'll make sure it's on bucket mode off and by the way if you ever have excess water or fluids in these that you don't want if you hold down shift you can dump input tank and that will avoid any inf uh, input in this tank however if you do want to collect the resources inside this tank you can move the fluid to the output tank and then extract it with either like a fluid hopper a fluid transporter fluid pipes anything of your choice you can get that out however we just want this quicksilver in here so i'll shift right click that down and we need cinnabar as well and luckily we have infinite cinnabar let's just check on our iron by the way we have twenty-two thousand ingots 22,000 ingots. And remember, we had no copper at the beginning of this episode. We have 14,000 copper already. So like I said, if you're at the same stage in the game as I am, make yourself one of these. It is very simple. It's just some brass sifters with the mana steel sieves. It is a auto hammer of each kind to make each dust. However, like I said, you can do these with pedestals. However, they won't be as fast at the moment. And these guys are actually making gravel or going to gravel faster than I'm producing it at the moment. So we will run out of gravel eventually. However, they're all just, you know, making us so much resources, which is really nice. Okay, I've set something up over here. Nothing too big. I did have to rewire our cables just a slight bit. All I did was throw another relay in the middle to split between two connections because you can only run one connection per connector. So I threw a relay in the middle that splits to that relay and then also splits to this connector over here. Now this is already this already has quicksilver in it because this guy is at 1200 degrees thanks to this vortex tube which I just threw some for, uh, sorry some pressure tubes around and cooled it down. I also threw a thermal lagging on the front, so this always retains heat. And all I have to do is throw some mana powder in here, and we'll get our first silver ingot. Now, I can't go further automation on this thing, because I do need to be able to power it. And unfortunately, this is so close to our current pressure chamber valve that I can't stick a tank and then throw the power source on the back. However, like I said, we're not going to be using this for silver for very long. It is just our current method of getting it. So it turns out I have done a bit of extra research and I am jumping the gun slightly too fast. They want you to make the original crusher first. Now, the reason is because you actually need the original crusher to crush down endstone to make the purple chalk, which the purple chalk was required for Ofix's calling and Ofix's calling is required to make the next set of crushers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the episode here. And normally I wouldn't wrap it up mid process. However, we have done quite a bit in this episode. We have automated silver or production. We automated uh, bioethylene. What is it called? We automated polyethylene. I've also set up all of our automated ore processing in the background there. And I set up netherrack processing as well, which I wasn't planning to do. We got a better blast furnace set up as well. So there's a lot of things we did actually get done in this episode. Episode. Not as much as I planned to, as I did want to get into mage fibers and all of that. 
However, that is something we'll kick next episode off of with. We will get ourselves our crushers. We'll summon a possessed Endermite to get Endstone. And we will start working with Morning Metacraft to get done with all the volatile redstone and such that we will need to make the rest of our stuff to eventually get to space. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like on the video. If you learned something new or if you would like to teach me something, leave it in the comments below. And if you don't want to miss the next upload or any other videos in the future, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.